Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. And I'm Bob, how's it going? Bob and I are here today to talk about the new 2025 Nordica Enforcer 89. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is our fourth time discussing new Enforcers. Correct. Also correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I think our assessment has changed ever so slightly compared to our initial reaction. Well, we learn as we go. You yes. Know, that's what we as humans do. So. No, initially it felt like the narrower three skis, so the new Enforcer 89, 94, and 99, compared to the skis that they replaced, all followed a pretty similar theme and concept, leaving the 104 a slightly different conversation. Yeah, and like my new theory, and correct me if you feel differently. This is fun, <laughs> these corrections. The 89 and the 104 are following similar trajectories, and the 94 and the 99 are doing the same thing in their own lane. I agree, except the amount that the 99 and 104 change in different directions yep. feels more substantial than the amount that the 89 and 94 change in the same different directions. Does that make sense? I agree with you more with the 99, 104. <laughs> I think that Changing that's, more? A, that's a starker difference. Yes. That's, that's my new take. Yeah, where the 94 and the 89, they are different, yep. but they feel more similar this is, getting com this is getting complicated. <laughs> but anyways, this is the Enforcer 89, um, and it does change, and it is pretty interesting. We just did that Anomaly 88 review, uh, and we really thought that that was a nice opportunity to kind of piggyback off of and do this Enforcer 89 review. And normally we save these conversations for the end of the video, but considering they're sister brands and considering the the Brahma 88 and the Enforcer 88 were such important popular skis. Why don't we talk about it now? Sure. It feels like they've flipped. So we used to when we used to talk about those skis, we would talk about the Brahma 88 being a superior or at least more powerful on-trail carver and the Enforcer 88 being better off trail. Yeah. And I think now it has flipped. I agree with that. I will not correct you there. Okay. Yeah, New so, Anomaly is considerably more versatile than New Enforcer 89. I think so, yeah. And they're, they both still fall in that category of powerful, relatively heavy all-mountain skis. Yeah. But I do, yeah. I do think it's at least interesting and, and worthwhile to point out that, yeah, it does, it does feel like they've, they've flipped. Yeah, totally. So I feel like that's enough uh, introduction. Uh, do you want to talk <laughs> us or just kind of give us a, a reminder of what has changed for construction? Sure. The new wood guy is the big thing, and we've really noticed uh, that most of the differences that we feel in these new Enforcer skis, specifically this 89, do start with that core. Yeah, you know it's I agree. it's a thicker core profile. Yeah, you know when you put you this it. and this eighty eight back to back, yeah. or side to side, I should say. There's basically my eyesight's failing, but when I was measuring it with our analog tape measure, it's about two millimeters, two millimeters thicker, thicker. Uh, especially in the in the uh, underfoot zone. You're I kinda, see. I like visually. I see. It, well, I guess I see it everywhere. Yeah, but it's. The, I mean, the thing that was striking to me is how thin this is right yeah. here. And then this, like, you still see so much sidewall. So we had this same conversation with the 104. Yeah. Like, that, yeah. Was, that was where it really started to become apparent, is that the, these new wood cores are, are quite a bit thicker overall. Um, and they're stiffer, too. You know, it's a blend of poplar and beech. It's still the same type of wood, but the thickness and, I guess, the source are different. Um, still two full sheets of metal. Although in new Enforcer, they are narrowed about two millimeters into the ski. So that's about the width of the edge. And you can see it too. Like when you look at the old Enforcer 88, you can see that metal following uh, where the sidewall meets the edge. And in these, you cannot. Um, so a little bit less metal overall. Uh, not a huge difference in terms of stiffness or flex or 
uh, stability or power. I just think it kind of allows the ski to have some better snow feel almost. Yeah, Nordica little... talks about it being just kind of like, yeah, more compliance when yeah. you're up on edge. Yeah. And I do think they have that. I think so too. Yeah. Um, Pulse Core has also filtered in from uh, the more front side skis that are using the, the double core, the horizontal wood laminates. So uh, a ski like a Steadfast 85 has a full length Pulse Core, which is just an elastomer material that goes in between the horizontal wood cores. And this new 89 has Pulse Core underfoot. So they are trying to take a little bit more out of kind of the the vibration process here uh, with that pulse core and you know it, it works you know we kind of talk about these skis as having a very different feel but with very subtle tweaks yes you know something that like enforcer 88 used to have was the carbon infused fiberglass and this ski doesn't have that anymore yeah so interesting how they make it stiffer without carbon but when we give it a flex i mean these are quite stiff i like almost hurt myself i was in here by myself yeah. and <laughs> Yeah, you gotta be careful. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. They're stiff and you know, these older 88s are just a little bit more a little bit more flexible. <laughs> it makes me feel <laughs> so ridiculous. No, you really gotta put your back into it. Um, and they are a little bit heavier too. Not a crazy amount. Um, 2108 grams. Yeah, what do we got here? That one's lighter. Oh, sorry. New one's lighter, right? <laughs> yeah. 2180 in the old ski. Yep. New ski is 2130. Let me weigh this one. By too. my measurements. Right. Yours, That's pretty consistent with what I had. Yeah, your ski was five, yeah. five grams heavier than my ski. Yep. And it does get an extra centimeter of... Or, one less centimeter of length of link change yeah. um, the sizing as well. So just a slight difference in length and width. Um, and then, you know, we can talk about the mount point too, like the other enforcers, they did move it forward a centimeter. So these actually look pretty even, but they are different in length. Just so yeah. A little like, bit more forward of a mount point. So again, like yeah. these little things just kind of add up to a totally different feel on snow. It is more similar than different. Totally. Don't you think? Yeah. It's still an Enforcer 88, 89. Yeah. Yeah. No, but totally. It does. There are some, yeah. No, it, it's worth talking about because it, it does feel different. Yeah. Um, I'm going to trade you this ski for your 2025 there. So shape gets a little bit interesting. There's two things I want to talk about. Um, what are your side cut dimensions over there, Bob? 12288. 110. But I'm 124, 89, 112. So my tips and tails gain two millimeters while underfoot gains one millimeter. Yep. Based on my knowledge of geometry, that would mean this ski has a shorter turn radius. Do you agree? Based on simple geometry and simple. circles? Yes. Yes, I yes. would agree. But that is not true. Well, what happened, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> so many things. So what is your turn radius over there? 17 and a half. And I'm 18. Yeah. So to me, that means that they've increased the length of the camber and side cut, basically yeah. taking out rocker and taper. And that's kind of where we are learning. You know, right. at, at, like it seemed like they all had more except for the 104. Like the 99 has more rocker than the, than the 100. Right pretty noticeably, but this certainly by the numbers, it must have less. And then when you hold them up next to each other, I mean, it's at least, it's at least less tip rocker yeah, you by can a actually, substantial amount. You can tell more from their little indicator here, the red, when you put them next to each other, yeah. there's, I don't know, three centimeters, if you want to call it that, yeah. of three centimeters less rocker in the new ski than the old ski. Yeah, and then the tails are pretty similar. More similar than different. Yeah, which is like interesting because they added the red like indicator thing yeah. on the new ski, which just like visually, I feel like the like initial reaction would be like, oh, they put that there to highlight how much more tail rocker it has. 
But that ski actually has more splay in yeah. the tail. Yeah. So it's a little bit longer effective edge, which I think is interesting. Yeah, and that's one of those things that you most certainly feel Absolutely. on snow. Yeah. So that's about it for construction and shape. You know, like like we said, they're they're largely the same. But yeah. they're still different. And I'm curious to get your opinion on how they feel different on snow. Um, I own a pair of these. Oh, yeah, I forgot. And yeah. That's and I great. Don't, I don't ski them a whole lot. Yep. You know, it's just one of those things that kind of is, frankly, a little harsh for yep. <laughs> sure. what I like to do on a day to day basis if I'm out there by myself just skiing, ar skiing around. Like, yep. I don't want to work this hard all that much. Um, the new ones are actually kind of taking that to the next level. Yep. That increased stiffness really just kind of aligns with more of a carving protocol. Yeah. So I think that it's fair to say that the new 89 on trail is a more capable carving ski than this 88. And I would also say that it outperforms a lot of narrower, more front side oriented skis in a carving arena as well. Yeah, take every single ski on the market from 80 to 90 underfoot. Yeah. I think Enforcer 89 has to be like top five best carving skis from 80 to 90. Yeah. And like maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? There's a lot of good ones in there, yeah. especially in the mid 80 range. And right. like if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But the <laughs> like the what I'm trying to say holds true is that it is a world class carving ski. Yeah. And you don't have to put in for its width. No. Like it is. Nope. It's like, just a yeah, blanket statement yeah. world class carving ski. And I think like this is probably true for both of us, not to speak for you, but I think you and I are both more comfortable in most situations carving turns on a ski like this compared to like a Nordica Doberman Multigara. Yeah, I use the Multigara in the article as kind of my, yeah. that kind of what you would consider to be, this is an, an, a pure on piste ski. Yeah. 70 millimeters underfoot, two sheets of metal, you know, very race inspired. Yeah. Um, but other than very, very, very firm snow, I would prefer to yeah. be on an Enforcer 89. Yeah, same with me. It's really just like, it's really the, the firmest of the firm snows. And we had a day with kind of refrozen really spring firm. snow. Yeah. Really There's hard. There's a bunch of footage of you on that. Yeah. yeah. And like, I felt like I struggled. And as we got lower and the snow softened up slightly, I was considerably more comfortable. Yeah, but no, that the, makes sense. But the stiffness and kind of just the aggressive nature of the ski on really hard snow, on super hard pack, I found that to be really challenging. So I just had a hard time committing to that and angle. Some amount of like trust of yourself too. Totally. Not just ski. Yeah. Well, it's just, uh, no, it wasn't the ski, it was me. Sure. You know, it was like, I physically don't feel like I can handle the forces that the ski is currently creating. I was on Forster 94 that day and I had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know, I do know what you're saying. Uh, it, it's it, interestingly for me, I had sort of an op the opposite experience and yeah. this was all subjective and it really comes down to like where and when we were skiing the Enforcer 89. I skied it on uh, also like a refrozen day, but they tilled more. Mm -hmm. So it was like refrozen granular. Yeah. And I remember feeling like I didn't have enough to push against. Right. And I couldn't, because it's so stiff and I'm pretty lightweight, it, it never wanted to like bend. And then the, it like never felt like super dynamic. But when I had it on like nice packed powder snow, or for me personally, I would have taken the conditions that you're talking about, like really firm and then just been silly and like go massive edge angle and yeah. just like lay it over. And in those situations, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. So it's, it's awesome. And like that ski was all, the Enforcer 88 has always been a tremendous carving ski, but they definitely, they ticked it up uh, in this new one. And I think it's pretty cool because it's, do you feel like previously, like Enforcer 88, 93, and 100 all had a relatively similar feel? 
Yeah. Now I feel like it's a progression where like Enforcer 89 and Enforcer 99 are two very different skiing experiences. Yeah, totally. Like that Enforcer 99 now with the increased rocker, it's like way more playful and way more maneuverable where this is like, it, all, it went the other way and it's stronger and stiffer and more yeah. burly. Yeah. And I still really enjoy kind of the conversation, the concept of an 89 being a more carving oriented ski. You know, yeah. some people won't even talk about carving at anything totally. over 75 under foot or I mean, basically or anybody, lower, anybody in Europe thinks we're crazy. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. But no, it's just, it's an interesting conversation. And all I can say is that I prefer the wider platform yeah. from a, for a carving ski. No, they're really good. Yeah. They're awesome. And it, if like, if that's, I was going to say if that describes you, and I feel like I can go a step further and, and say with confidence that like that describes most people. Yeah. When like you're talking about all mountain skiing, most of your time is spent on groomed trails. Yeah. And like if that's you, and it chances are it is because a lot of people fall <laughs> into that category, then this is a fantastic ski. Yeah. So whatever limitations it has, like kind of outside of the on piste application it is going to be okay for a lot of skiers. Yes. Should we talk about off-piste now? Sure. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think that ski was all, the Enforcer 88 was always tough too. I always felt like that ski had like a touch of, um, I guess, playfulness. I don't know why. I just remember skiing it uh, like down nosedive S turns, which we have actually a lot of footage of the new. In fact, basically everything that you're seeing in regards to off piece, my apologies, is not technically off piece, but at least it's shorter and skidded turns and not right. carves. Um, I remember skiing the Enforcer 88 on that terrain and feeling kind of playful and bouncy. And I just, I, I pretty much don't feel that way on the new ski. So it's still fine, and it, like realistically, the performance is still relatively similar. I just feel like it's more planted than it was before. I guess I was always more hopeful as to the Enforcer 88 or 89's off-piece capabilities. Like when I take my yeah. 88 in the woods or in the bumps, I'm just like, whoa, this is, <laughs> this is a lot. A lot. Yeah. You know, it's not something that, that I think is a highlight of the ski. Yeah. You know, it's just stiff. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just on a, a touch too stiff to really make it super maneuverable, easy to pivot. Yeah. Like it definitely wants to be engaged kind of in the totality of the turn. Yeah. And, you know, if you're in softer snow, you know, this kind of had a little bit longer of a rocker profile. Yep. You could kind of lean on that yeah, if you could. were in the trees in the or tail the bumps. Too. Yeah. You know, you could kind of yeah. look to those things and be like, all right, this is at least helping me out. It's a narrower version of a more free ride oriented ski. Yeah. And I think that the new Enforcer 89, just similar to what our conversation with the 104, is just moving the needle more to the on trail side of the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's an interesting move. It is, totally. Um, but like, it also makes sense to me because the, like, it matches the progression of width. Yeah, totally. You know, yep. like, why, like, if if it's so good as a carving ski, why does it also need to do this over here? Yeah. No, and I think that we, we when we talked about the 104, we also talked about the Unleashed, and Nordica has, you know, the 98 and the 108 yeah. and, the, and the Unleashed series to kind of get you more into that free ride creative realm yeah. as opposed to the 104. You know, I, I do wish that they had that Unleashed 90 in the same build, yeah. kind of opening up that that character in this range, but maybe they just felt like they didn't need it. Yeah, I'd love to see, like, uh, Unleashed 92. Yeah, with the terrain-specific metal yep. and, yep. and all that totally. stuff. Totally. Yeah. Yep. I also wouldn't mind, like, a little more taper on it. Yeah. Like, really lean into the, the mogul potential of right. a ski like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are some other skis that you uh, use similar adjectives to describe? 
like, like the Mantra 88, I mean, the, yep. that kendo is going to come up in this conversation as yep. well. Those were kind of always our three, you know, kind of the big three in terms of an all-mountain ski that carves better than everything else. MX-88. MX-88, you know, yeah. that's still kind of the, that's kind of the benchmark in terms yeah. of having that front side, that angular shape to it. This still is rounder, and that's kind of, that comes through in its turns. I did feel like this thing really wanted to finish yeah. that round turn, um, whereas that Kessley is, I, I found that to be a little bit more direct to the fall line. Yep. Um, I just feel like Enforcer 89 is now, it belongs in the same conversation as Kendo slash Mantra 88 and MX 88, uh, where previously I didn't like to put it in that category. Yeah. I understood that it was close to that category, but it felt like there was more of a break from Enforcer to Brahma, mm -hmm. Kendo, and MX-88. And now I feel like it's more of a jump from, it's a smaller jump, but now the jump feels like it goes from Anomaly 88 to Enforcer 89, then to Mantra 88, then to MX-88. Yeah. And we can probably just have that conversation exactly again in the fall when we line up all these skis and totally. compare them. Yeah. But if we went like most playful to Slarvy to Carvy, I don't remember the last time we did Slarvy to Carvy, but that's one of my favorite comparison formats or organizations. This would be third to Carviest. Yeah. In my opinion. And like uh, with the new. With that 89, like I can't help but think of the K2, that Mindbender 89. Yeah, that, that one would be fourth yeah, from it's, Carviest. It just is a little bit more amenable in the tip, but has the same type of tail feel in terms yeah. of uh, just really wanting to make an energetic turn through through the end. Actually, Mindbender, Mindbender might be fifth from Carviest. That'll be a tough one. Mindbender yeah. versus Anomaly 88 on Slarvy to Carvy. Yeah. It's a tough battle. It is a tough battle. It's a heated, <laughs> heated battle. Um, so I feel like that tells the story. Yeah. I think it is better as a carving ski than the Enforcer 88. And I think it's slightly worse off piste or not slightly worse, just harder. A little harder. It's a little, yeah. it's a little more challenging to ski. And as with anything, when we have this conversation, there are some of you that we're probably talking to right now that that doesn't apply to because you're a phenomenal skier and you can unweight the tail edge and you've been skiing stiff long skis your whole life and you think we're crazy but there's a lot of people where <laughs> this conversation is is going to apply to yeah so it's worth having yeah and certainly like unflappable you yeah, know yeah. like yeah any type of advert any type of adversity yeah if you hit that at speed it's going right through yeah you know, super solid yeah no, if, talk about confidence inspiring stability. Yeah. Enforcers have it. Uh, they have a plethora of yeah. that. Yeah, no shortage. No. So that's it. That is the new Enforcer 89. Uh, we still got the 94 to talk about. Yeah, tied for my favorite at this point. Your favorite Enforcer? Yeah. Is that 99 and 94? Yeah, it's a, it's a big battle. Sure. I don't know that I feel so strongly about that. Keeps me awake at night. Really? Yeah. No, it doesn't. It does. I don't believe you at all. <laughs> uh, anyways, let us know if you have any questions about any Enforcers or this Enforcer 89 specifically, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.